Right. Um, good afternoon and uh, welcome to this uh, second webinar that we are running. Uh, this is going to be a webinar specifically on charting and technical analysis. Uh, I'm Richard Keyes, I'm the support manager here at Ionic Information and I will be uh, running the webinar this afternoon. So today, as I said, we'll be focusing in, uh, focusing on charts and then on technical analysis and then the filtering um, side, well, the technical analysis side of filtering. So let's have a look at uh, the charts. I have a chart here of 3i group, which will do quite uh, just fine. And if we press the green button here at the top, we can zoom it up into full screen. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is chart settings. If you notice at the bottom of your chart, you're going to have several buttons, one called buy and hold, spread bet, intraday candles. These are different chart settings. If I click on them, uh, I will still see a chart of 3i group, the share won't change, but the way that the chart is set up will. Here are several different examples of what we think customers might be interested in, uh, but you are obviously free to modify any way uh, you wish. Now, a setting is what holds all of the way that the chart is set up. So if you add a moving average to this chart, for example, uh, you're not adding a moving average to free I group, you're adding a moving average to the buy and hold setting because that's one uh, the one that we've got selected. And you'll see there are several buttons here and there's also a menu on the left hand side and if we click on it, you can access the list of the uh, the various button, the, the various settings here. Now, for the purposes of this uh, webinar we're going to create a new setting so I'm going to go to create new I will call it webinar and here is a fairly blank chart uh, that we are free to modify now you'll see at the bottom uh, there is no button here for the webinar setting if I click on the menu I can select add this setting to toolbar and now I'll have a shortcut here for it. If there are any settings that you want to remove from the toolbar because you don't use them, you can select the setting here, go to the setting menu and select remove the setting from toolbar. When you do it, the button will disappear. So you can add and remove uh, various settings buttons as, as you please. Now, if uh, once you've set up a chart, if you'd like to create a different setting uh, that is very similar to one that you've already created, just with a few uh, a few tweaks here and there, you don't have to set up the whole chart from scratch. You can just copy uh, an existing setting. You can do that by selecting the setting you wish to copy, and uh, you will see there's a copy this setting. Uh, button here and it'll just create a copy of what you've already got. Uh, delete the setting does exactly what it says on the tin, it'll delete it and uh, you can also rename the setting if you want to change a name from webinar to something else. Uh, last button here at the bottom is restore settings to defaults. Um, if you have modified one of the uh, pre-built settings that comes uh, preloaded in the program but you want to go back to how it was by default, you can click here and you can choose uh, which ones you want to reset to the defaults. Uh, these ones have not been modified. This has been modified and if I hit reset, it'll go back to how it was um, on uh, at the very beginning. So the first thing that I want to talk about charts is uh, time. So in the top left hand corner here, you will see what the uh, custom time frame is for the chart. At the moment we have it set to one year. So whatever share we open up, by default, it'll open up and display a year of data. We can click on the all button, uh, which will display the entire history. Or if we click on custom, we can choose the time frame uh, that we want to use. So for example, if I select number of months and put six, I'll click on OK. And now the chart is uh, set up to display six months of data. 
Now you don't have to constantly modify the time frame using a custom button here. You can uh, zoom in and zoom out of a chart. Now to zoom in, uh, you click, drag, and let go. When you let go, it will zoom in to the highlighted portion. And you can do that with your finger if you're using a tablet. So just put your finger, drag, and let go. And when you let go, it will zoom into that portion. You can keep on doing it if I now click, drag here it'll keep on zooming in if I double click on the chart it will return to whatever my default selection so back to my six months if you're using a tablet there's a little reset zoom button that will appear in the top left hand corner so just tap on that and it'll go back to your six month selection The next menu I wanted to look at is bars. Now here is uh, the, here is where you choose the size of the bars on your chart. So here we've got open, high, low, close bars set to one day. So each bar is showing you one day of data. And we can change this to uh, one week. Now we're looking at still six months of data, but using weekly bars or monthly bars or we can go intraday and look at four hour bars or one hour bars. Now, you'll have noticed I selected one hour bars, but it's still here at the top, you'll see it still says Pence Daily Bars. That's because the program won't load hourly bars if you're trying to display too much data. Uh, if uh, So here it, it won't allow you to, to, to load six months worth of hourly bars. It's too much data or put too much strain on, on the bandwidth. Um, the maximum number of days that you can display using hourly bars is 120. So on if you select four hours, one hour or 30 minute bars, you can show up to 120 days. In fact, if I now zoom in to fewer than 120 days, now I can see my hourly bars. For smaller selections, so anything below 30 minutes, 15, 10, 5 or 1, the largest number is 30 days. So I can show a maximum of 30 days of data on a 10 minute bar. If I select 10 minute bars, it will, I, I'm still showing now too many days uh, and so the program will just backpedal and set it to 30 minute bars. So I have to, it'll tell you here if it does make any change, it'll say dynamic. And if I now zoom in, so I can see fewer than 30 days. I can now see my 10 minute bars on the chart. If I go back to day, I now can see my daily bars again. I double click and I go back to my six month selection. Now, uh, the next menu is where you can select the chart type. Now there are several different chart types. Uh, there is a, a close line. A uh, close line is just a line chart. It will show you one data point, in this case the close, for every whatever you've selected here. So in this case it's showing me one point per day. Uh, if I change this to one week it will show me the close of every week just as a line chart. Um, the difference between close line and midline, midline is only really visible if you zoom in to the last few days of data, but it will show you if you zoom in and we'll have a look at it now for today and zoom right in. And okay. Now we set it to intraday. We can now see every single price change. So instead of just showing one price per minute because I've got one minute candlesticks here it's showing me it's not time based it's just every price variation that free eye group has had today and that is going to be you know, very often or not very often at all depending on on how volatile or how, how liquid the share is the next chart type is uh, what we've seen already is the open high low close bars uh, we then have candlesticks which uh, many of you are probably familiar with. And then we have Heikenashi candles, which are a calculated uh, candlestick, a version of candlesticks. Uh, I'm not going to dwell too much on this because they're not very popular as a, as a method. Uh, but, uh, and the last one is point and figure. So if you, if you like uh, point and figure charts, we can show 
a point and figure chart of free eye group. I'm going to now set this back to a normal bar chart on six months. Now, if you want to change the way the graph looks like, anything from background color and uh, fonts and etc., you will use the design button in the bottom left. And now we're going to go through the options that appear here. So if you press the design button, bottom left hand corner of a chart, uh, here you can again change the type of chart. So we've got it on bars. And uh, below we've got the coloring mode. Uh, at the moment it's set to single color. So, and the color is this one here, and I can change it by just clicking on the colored square. So all the bars are colored of just a single color. I can change that. I can change it to close uh, versus close. It will then use an up uh, or down coloring mode. Um, and it will determine if a, share, if a day is up uh, or down based upon how it closed compared to the previous close. So if it closed higher than the previous close, it'll use the up color. If it closed lower than the previous close, it will use the down color. If I hit preview, you can now see it. I've got red and um, black bars. Oh, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier, um, with the recording software that I use, uh, sometimes you might notice when I click on drop down menus, you won't see the drop down menu itself. We're trying to solve that problem, but uh, I do apologize if it, if you if it's slightly confusing. Um, the third option that you can choose is close uh, close to open. Uh, this again will use an up or down coloring mode but it will decide if a bar is up or down, but not by comparing the close with the previous close, but the close with the open. So if it closed higher than that morning's open, if, if you're using daily, um, it will color it of the up color. And if it closed lower than the open, it'll color it of a down color. Uh, this is important because you might have some days where it closed higher than the previous close, but it still closed lower than the open. So the colors would change. I'm going to set it back now to single color. Uh, line thickness does exactly what it says. You can uh, you can make it you can make the uh, the, the bars drawn with a, a slightly thicker pen. Uh, bid off a line. This will allow you to draw lines, uh, and you will only see them if you zoom uh, into uh, intraday range, showing only one or two days of data. But it will draw a line showing you where the bid and offer points were on the chart at any point throughout the day. Uh, and it can show it as a line uh, or a shading where it shades the background to highlight the bid and the offer area. Um, if you want to see an example, look under, uh, if you look under intraday line, uh, that setting, you'll see it in action. Axes, here is where we set up, uh, well, uh, how the axes uh, are set up. So uh, show future allows you to add a bit of blank space at the end of a chart. So uh, I have it set to 10% of the range. So 90% is showing me bars, 10% at the end is blank. Um, and it's especially useful if you want to draw lines that extend further than the most recent bar. Um, and you can change the way that the future is shown. So you can show it uh, to display at the end a uh, blank up to the end of a current day. That's useful if you're only looking at one or two days of data or end of current year uh, or a specific number of minutes, hours or days. None, it would draw the chart right against the right hand margin. But let's keep it to 10% of the range. Um, the Y axis here, you can set it. Uh, I've got the left hand axis is not displaying at all, but I can activate it. I can either show the price. So now I, on the Y axis, I can see the actual price of a share and, uh, or I could show it as a percentage. If I do start at 0%, you'll see now the left hand axis begins at 0% and then goes above or below zero. Now the 0% point is always going to be the leftmost price on that is currently visible on the chart. That's your 0% point. So I can easily see that this point here on the chart is 16% below this point on the chart. And if you zoom in, 
this recalculates again setting it to the close of the leftmost bar that's again your zero percent point the next option on axis is start at 100 percent it's exactly the same as the other option but instead of starting at zero percent and going positive or negative it starts at 100 percent and goes above 100 or below 100 but the uh, uh, the information is the same uh, price scale padding this is how much extra space is added uh, above and below the chart so it's five percent so um, the program will take the highest and lowest price that's visible on the chart and add an extra five percent either way of blank space uh, we can change that if we do something big do 50 percent you can now see that uh, uh, it's it's added a lot more than on on either side or we'll keep it on five percent if you are using a device with a keyboard you can uh, increase and decrease that temporarily using the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard if I use the up arrow it will compress the chart and if I use the down arrow key it will expand the chart um, if I do shift up key or shift down key so hold down the shift key on your keyboard and use the up and down arrow key you'll actually shift the whole graph up or down um, this is temporary uh, if I double click on the chart again it will return it to the, the default setup Um, here's just a couple of extra options. Um, it'll show the latest price on the right hand margin. Uh, show analytic values. Again, if you add indicators below the chart, like an RSI, it will show the latest value again on the right with a little label on, on the right hand axis. And uh, show value at cursor will show the price of wherever your mouse is pointing uh, on the chart. Uh, style here you can just set things like uh, the background color, the text color, uh, the frame color, the grid color and uh, watermark if you want to add the, uh, uh, t uh, the, the epic code or TIDM as a watermark if you don't you can just uncheck it and it will disappear um, and uh, you can set a uh, here it's a graduated fill uh, it will just allow you to do, be a bit uh, a bit more creative with creative with the colors I'm just gonna pick a fairly extreme example so it goes from this color to this color top to bottom this is uh, just purely a uh, it has has no useful function as a, other than uh, it, it being pleasant to look at um, and again you can show the percentage change as a watermark in the background and set up an up color or a down color and the last one is the volume tab uh, which will allow you to disable the volume chart entirely if you want uh, you can decide to merge it with a price chart if you want to uh, you make a slightly better use of your space it will draw the volume chart on the main chart you can risk though getting a bit of an overlay as you can see here in the bottom right and uh, volume chart has a coloring mode just like the main uh, chart has so here it's single color all the bars are green or I can select volume up and down so it will use a positive color or a negative negative color depending if a volume is higher uh, or lower than the previous day uh, bar close this will color the bars uh, not based on the volume but based on the close price so we'll check if the close was higher or lower than the previous day and it will use a, uh, a positive or negative color and here it's a uh, volume minus signal now signal which we can activate by ticking here is uh, nothing but a moving average of the volume so in this case a 25 period moving average uh, period is whatever you've set up on the chart so if your chart is daily it's going to be a 25 day moving average uh, and volume minus signal will color in the positive color all the days where the volume was higher than its signal so higher than average and in red all the days where it was lower than average I'll hit cancel I'll, 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 I'll get rid of the changes I made
Now, the next bit I'm going to talk about is uh, probably everybody's favorite indicator, uh, most commonly used moving averages. Now, if you want to set up a moving average, it's quite simple. You go to the Add menu and you select Moving Averages. Click on it and the box will open up. Uh, if the uh, move, if there are no moving averages set up, it'll automatically open up a box where you can create your first moving average. Uh, here is where I can actually pick the color. So it'll be a red line and I can choose a type. So I'll do exponential 10 periods. And if you want to add things like Bollinger Bands, envelopes or Keltner Bands, you can tick show channel and choose the type of channel that you want but we're not going to do that we'll just add a just a exponential a 10 period exponential moving average so i'll click on ok and here is the list of all the moving averages i have added on uh on the graph so just one in this case and it's telling me that a 10 period exponential uh, moving average uh, is on i can uh, i'll be able to see it and the bollinger band option is switched off um, let's add a second one already. If we create, hit create, the same box as before will open up. I'll pick a different color, blue, and this time I'll do an exponential 20 period. There we go. Click on OK, and here are my two moving averages. And you can keep on going, add multiple ones if you want. Uh, you can add two, three, four, five, six, as many moving averages as you want. All you do is go to add moving averages and this box opens up again. Now, if you want to get rid of them, there's two ways of doing so. You can um, uncheck the moving average option and click on OK. That will temporarily remove the moving average from the chart, but you can turn it back on again by just ticking the box. If you hit delete, it will remove it entirely and you'll have to create it again if you want to add it back to the chart. Now, uh, now that I've shown you how to add the moving averages on the chart, uh, let's start to have a look at filtering. Um, let's filter on these two moving averages I've added a 10 period and a 20 period exponential moving average on the chart uh, 10 day and 20 day because my chart is daily and uh, I now want to filter for shares where these two moving averages have just crossed so I'm going to go back to show showing a split screen and I'll pick a slightly larger list than the FTSE 100 I'll pick pick the FTSE all share yeah. Uh, the uh, moderately liquid stocks uh, in M full list. So to create a new filter above the list, there's a filter button and we select apply filter. Here you'll see the list of all the filters you've already created and uh, there's a default one that comes with a program. If you select it and click on OK, it will load that filter, but we don't want to do that now. We want to press new and create our new filter. Uh, I'm just going to call this Golden Cross, which is just the name of a short term, uh, short period moving average crossing above a, a long period moving average. And if you want, you can add a description to it, uh, especially if it's something a bit more complex than just a Golden Cross. Um, associated list uh, allows you to uh, link a filter to a specific list so when you go and select it um, if you are not viewing that list say if I select it link it to a FTSE all share it means that every time I select Golden Cross it will always jump to the FTSE all share it doesn't matter what list I happen to have in uh, open at that moment in time if I do no associated list, the filter will apply against whichever list I happen to have open. So FTSE 100, one of your portfolio, uh, or in this case, the FTSE all share. So I'm not going to associate it with any list. I'll click on OK. And here is our filter. Now we click on OK to load the filter onto our list. Now, of course, this is a new filter, so it's completely blank. There's nothing here. Now, uh, 
this is going to be a very simple filter because there will be only a single criteria to add. I'm going to press a blue add criteria button. I'm going to go to the technical tab. This is where you find all of the charting options. So moving averages, technical indicators and so on. I select moving average. And from the variant drop down menu, I pick golden cross. Now I will go through all these other options as well to explain what they do. But let's pick golden cross. So I'm looking specifically for a golden cross and above the uh, variant box you'll now see there are two moving averages. So I'm going to set up the two moving averages I want to check. So exponential 10 and exponential 20. And uh, below here you can choose the period of a chart that you want to apply this to, so daily. Uh, there is no intraday option uh, for the filtering. Um, it's still a bit uh, processor intensive, so uh, it's something that we might uh, then add in the future. But for now we'll keep it on daily. Uh, on the right hand side there's a look back option. Uh, now the look back option is how far the program will look uh, back for a cross. Uh, if it's on five, it will look back five periods, or in this case, five days. So it will find any share where the 10 period exponential moving average has crossed above the 20 period exponential moving average at any point in the last five days. Uh, these periods are fairly short, so uh, crosses occur pretty often. So I'll set this to one, so it'll only find crosses that occurred in the last period, i.e. between ye uh, yesterday and today. Um, when I say yesterday, of course, I, I mean uh, Monday. Um, the tick box below is only true golden cross. Now, if you want to be uh, look for a strict golden cross, then not only the two moving averages have to have crossed, but both moving averages have to be rising. So obviously the short period must be rising because it's crossed above the uh, 20 period, but also the long-term moving average must also be rising. Um, if we don't tick this, it just looks for crosses. It doesn't matter how they've crossed. So I'll keep it like this. I'll click on OK. And then I hit the Apply button and here we have it. Uh, market isn't doing great, so I'm not surprised that there aren't that many uh, positive crosses in the last uh, in in the last day. But if I pick uh, one of the shares, the chart here it is on the right hand side, and if I zoom in, I can see that the 10 period moving average has crossed above the 20 period in the last day. It was below uh, on the 24th and it is now above uh, on the 27th and that will be true for each one of these shares here based on the movement barely below here but yet yeah, a cross has indeed occurred and the same thing goes for here and here and here as well The uh, filter is now complete. Uh, if you want to then apply it to a different list of shares, all you need to do is pick that different list of shares from uh, the options. So if I select US 500, it's now searching through the entirety of the S&P 500. And uh, if I select on US shares, it now applies the same filter on all of the shares in the US. If I go back to FTSE All Share, it will apply the filter again to FTSE All Share. Once you uh, are done and you no longer wish to look at the results of the filter, hit the exit button and you'll return to the table you were on before. Before we do that, I just wanted to quickly show you the other options pertaining moving averages. Now, Golden crosses are not the only things that you can search for uh, when filtering. There's obviously dead cross, which is simply the opposite of a golden cross. Um, 
value allows you to uh, filter on the actual value the monetary value of a moving average so a moving average will have a monetary value which will follow the price of a share you have uh, and if you uh, want to create a filter based on the actual value of the moving average you can select it uh, here here is what said which period you're looking at so here is the latest value of a moving average or I can look at the what the value of a moving average was five periods ago or one period ago uh, or I can see how the value of a moving average has changed over the last 10 period so if this is absolute change it will show me tell me that the moving average has gone down by 25 pence and percentage change will show me that that 25 pence was equals to 4.7 percent for example value channel uh, will allow you to do uh, exactly the same but not for moving average instead for uh, one of a channel one of a bands so if you're looking to filter on on things like Bollinger bands or envelopes uh, or uh, Keltner bands uh, price crossed moving average uh, that does a similar uh, job as golden cross or dead cross but looks for uh, instead of two moving averages crossing it looks for the price to have crossed the moving average and you select price crossed above moving average you choose your moving average and the uh, if you want the, the price to have crossed above VMA or below VMA price cross channel uh, again here it looks uh, if you want to know when uh, say the share price has crossed above the uh, top Bollinger Band so again you select your moving average you set your select Bollinger Bands however many standard deviations upper channel value crossed above and again it will find the shares where the price has crossed above the upper uh, Bollinger Band and uh, here you can uh, if uh, if you want to do a few more calculations then uh, this will return the ratio between two moving averages um, so if you want to see for example if moving averages are getting closer together or further apart this will simply take the value of a uh, moving average of the first moving average and divide it by the value of the second moving average and return the ratio you can then filter on that ratio um, Similarly, you can do it for uh, the price to moving average. So again, value of the uh, price divided by the value of the moving average. And uh, similarly here you can see this is uh, the uh, it's uh, this is showing you the percentile of the price. Uh, within the channel so it allows us to see how close the price is to the um, top or bottom band of uh, a set of Bollinger Bands or a set of envelopes Now if I hit on exit we will go back to the uh, list. Now all those uh, features I just showed you are moving averages you don't have to necessarily add them as part of a filter uh, you can just add them as a column so if I go to for example add column and I select moving average and I select value and set my 10 period exponential moving average I click on OK and here it is this is just the latest value of the 10 period exponential moving average so uh, uh, 776 pence if I look at the chart I can see that the 10 period is around yeah there we go 776 pence the technical tab when adding a column doesn't just have moving averages um, it also has all the other technical indicators uh, that we carry in the program which we're going to have a look at in a second so for example if you want to see what the latest value of the average true range is again you select average true range 
you select value latest value and you set the period that you want to use click on OK and this is the latest value of my uh, of a 20 period uh, average true range Now, if we go back to the chart, I'm going to remove the two moving averages. I don't want to add too much to the chart to create confusion. Let's have a look now at indicators. So uh, there's a button at the top that says indicators. If we press that, a box opens up and it will allow you to add indicators below the chart. And there's a very long list of indicators here. Um, I uh, will look, for example, at, let's look at uh, relative strength index, RSI, a very common indicator. You select the indicator you want from a drop-down menu. Again, I apologize if you haven't actually seen the drop-down menu, but uh, if you try it with your copy of SharePad, uh, you will see what the drop-down menu looks like. And if you then press Create, a new uh, default RSI will be created uh, in, uh, in, in the box here. Now, you can change it by pressing the Edit button, and I can change a period and the color. Now, there's an option here called Show Levels, uh, 30, 50, and 70. Now, remember that because if I click on OK to actually draw the uh, RSI below the chart, let's see if there's a, a slightly better share for that. Ah, there we go. Here it is. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the RSI, the, the share pad draws three lines on the chart at those three levels that we decided. So 50, which is a middle level, 30, which is a lower level, which you can't see at the moment because it, uh, it doesn't go that far, and 70 being the higher level. Whenever the higher level or the lower level are breached, the program will actually color in uh, that part of the line. So every time it goes above 70, it will highlight it in uh, red. If I go back to indicators and edit the 20 period RSI, I can change this to 40 and 60. The lines will now be drawn lower. Here there are 60 and 40 line. And so you'll see a lot more uh, of the RSI will be highlighted in red. If we zoom out, zoom back in again, this is what it looks like. So you can choose your own levels and the program will highlight whenever those levels are breached, either up or down. If you want to change the colors that are used, uh, your breach colors, uh, you can press the design button and under the style tab, fill indicator levels, overbought, oversold. Change this to red, cha uh, change this to, so change the red into whatever color or the green into whatever color you wish to use. Now you can add as many indicators as you want. Obviously you are limited by the si vertical size of your monitor, but there's no theoretical uh, limit to the number of indicators. So let's say we want to add a, a MACD on the chart. Uh, again, we're from the drop down menu, we go and search for MACD and we hit create. Again, if we hit edit, we can then change the period. So we've got here is a 13, 26, 9, we'll keep the defaults. Uh, and uh, here is uh, the various colors for the various lines. Uh, I'll draw the main lines and the histogram as well. And if I click on OK, here is my MACD. You'll see that I'm pointing the mouse arrow and again you can use a finger if you point at the top edge of any of the indicator boxes you can resize the indicator boxes to suit your needs. Now uh, there is a uh, here we've just added a MACD and again the, back, the various colors are entirely up to you which which colors uh, you uh, you use and uh, 
keep this uh, here because we will be uh, looking at creating filters based on these indicators. There's a huge selection of various technical indicators. Um, some are extremely common and popular like RSI and MACD and there are some uh, slightly more uh, obscure ones like a measles indicator or, the, uh, or a rune, for example. One of the things you can uh, also do on a chart uh, is to uh, draw on it. If you press the draw button above the chart, you will see uh, the menu, uh, the toolbar will change to a, um, a draw toolbar. There are various things that you can draw on the chart, most commonly a line. Um, so what, once you've clicked on draw, you can make sure that this button here, the draw a line button is selected. You click, hold the mouse button down, drag and let go. And the program will draw a line from A to B. You can then click on this line again and click and drag and draw a second one and a third one and so on. If you are using a device with a keyboard, you don't have to go to the draw menu every time. You can simply hold down the shift key on your keyboard. If you hold down the shift key, click, drag, and let go. Hold down the shift key, click, drag, and let go. And it will draw a line from A to B. If you want to delete a line, uh, you select the line you wish to delete and you'll see it here as a little squares at the um, top and bottom of a line and there's a delete button it will remove it uh, if you're using a uh, keyboard you can use a delete key on your keyboard if you want to uh, quickly go through and delete all the lines you've drawn using the tab key on your keyboard will select each line each item that you've drawn on the chart in turn uh, so if I do tab, delete, tab, delete, tab, delete, you can quickly go through and delete everything you've drawn on the chart. Uh, another very popular drawing feature is the line alarm. It works exactly like a normal line. Uh, so if you select it, again, you click, you drag, and you let go. The difference is that there is an alarm on this line and you'll, you'll know because there's a little bell gets drawn uh, on it. Uh, if the share price uh, were at any point to cross that uh, alarmed line, an alarm will go off and it will notify you of the fact that the, uh, that the line has been breached and you'll see a little pop-up appear in, uh, in the corner of your share pad. Hit delete and the line alarm will then uh, disappear. Uh, the next button, uh, again this is quite uh, popular, it will allow you to add a little note on the chart. So I type whatever I want to remind myself of, I click on OK and I can then drag the note around the chart. Uh, if you use the center of a center square, it will allow you to drag the note. And if you use the little square in the corner, it will allow you to change the size of the note box. When you select an, uh, an item uh, on, that you've drawn, so be it a line or a note box, um, these menu items allow you to make changes to the way that line or that note box uh, looks. So, um, RGB will allow you to pick a color for the line. So I can press green and now my line is green. And uh, it will also uh, allow me through options to do things like extend into the future. Um, by default, a line will just go from A to B, where you click to where you let go. But if you extend into the future, the line will be drawn infinitely into the future. If you would like all your lines to look like this, so green and extending into the future. Once you've set up your first line the way you want it, on the style menu, you can tick on set as default style. 
and all lines you'll draw from now on will have those settings. So now all the lines I draw by default will be green and extend infinitely into the future. Same thing for the note. If you want to change something about the way the note looks, you select it. I can, for example, change the color of the note box here. And same as with a line, I can set this as my default style. I'll show you one more of the, uh, of the uh, line features. Uh, I'll show you uh, Fibonacci retracements because this again is uh, is a very uh, popular uh, investment tool, technical analysis tool. And if I select it, just like with any other line, uh, once you select which uh, item you want to draw, you click, you drag, and you let go. Okay, it's it's using the same default settings as my. Uh, a line so I'm going to change these back something a little darker and stands out a bit better um, it will draw a Fibonacci retracement from point A to point B and uh, you can drag those two points after you've drawn it and the various Fibonacci levels will draw automatically for you and uh, if you wish to do so, you can actually edit the Fibonacci levels, uh, click on them. And uh, all you need to do is just add uh, further levels or delete some levels. And all you need to do is put the number separated by commas. So it's pretty straightforward. And if I, for example, uh, remove the 61.8, click on OK, and the 61.8 line now disappears. Remember, if you wish to delete this Fibonacci retracement, uh, you have to delete the retracement line that you've drawn. Um, clicking on any of these lines here will do nothing. You have to click on the diagonal line that you drew to draw the actual Fibonacci retracement. Then you click on it. Now you can see it's highlighted and then you can delete it. When you select a line, you can do uh, one of the other things that you can do is duplicate uh, parallel lines are a fairly uh, common use of lines and so once you've drawn your first line you want to draw a parallel line um, to it and all you do is hit duplicate and then click on where you want the line to appear and now you'll have perfectly parallel lines. Again, if you want to delete them, select and delete. This uh, button here, uh, which we haven't talked about, uh, this just toggles the crosshair on and off. If you'd rather not have a crosshair, you can use this button here. This button inverts the scale of the chart. Um, it's not very useful if you're looking at shares. Uh, it becomes more interesting if you're looking at foreign exchange. If you open up a chart of the pound dollar and press this button, you're now looking at a chart of the dollar pound. So just the inverse of it. Log button, uh, this will change the chart from a uh, linear scale to a logarithmic scale. And so it's probably easier to see if we uh, show the whole history of the stock. And we press log, now it's a, a logarithmic chart. Now we press again, now this is a, a linear chart. You can export charts, so uh, if you want to um, email a chart to a friend for example um, you can post a chart onto uh, chat onto twitter you can save it as an image uh, and print it then by using the sharing menu here 
Now, let's have a quick look here at the drop down menu and uh, I'll just quickly go through some of these uh, features uh, before we go and look at some more filtering. Um, here you will have things like price donkey channels, uh, which are commonly used. Uh, the use of all of these is fairly simple. You choose what uh, chart feature you want to activate it. You click on it, you set it up. Uh, so you can change the background, the colors, for example, or the period. You click on OK. And if you then wish to disable that feature, you just select it again, uncheck, click on OK, and the feature is now disabled. And you'll find uh, pivot points, parabolic SAR, Ichimoku charts, and uh, if you're familiar with uh, with these, then uh, you can see all these options will should be uh, fairly obvious then to you. And again, click on OK, Ichimoku charts get drawn on the chart, back here, and you can uncheck for the Ichimoku charts to then disappear. Now, let's go back to show slightly some uh, some more practical examples of, of filtering. Uh, the idea is that you get an idea of how the technical filtering works and then you can apply it to whatever techniques you use. Uh, if you do get lost in these uh, in these things, don't worry, uh, we can you, know, you can contact our support line and we can tell us what you're looking for and we'll walk you through building a filter. But hopefully this should give you a good idea of, uh, of, uh, of how to create a technical filter. So um, for example uh, is uh, Let's have a look at a filter searching for uh, potential trend reversals. What we might use is we might use uh, RSI and MACD uh, to look for trend reversals. So if we go back to the chart, we'll look for shares where the RSI is below 30. In fact, I'm going to edit this so it's back to the standard. 30, 70 levels. So I'm looking for shares where the RSI is below 30 and where the MACD has just crossed. So MACD, the dark red line, has just crossed above the signal line, so the moving average of a MACD, uh, while being below zero, which is normally an indication of a change in trend. So if we go back to our list, and I'll hit apply filter. I'll create new and I'll call this trend reversal. I'll click on OK. And here's my blank filter as before. So we're looking for three things. We're looking for an RSI below 30, MACD crossing its signal and the MACD below zero. So we start with the first criteria, we press add criteria. Under technical, we go and search for the indicator we wish to look for, so RSI. Uh, we want our 20 period RSI. And here we're not interested in how the RSI is changing. We just want to know what the latest value of the RSI and we want it to be below 30. So we look 20 periods, daily chart. We're looking at the value and we want the latest value. So we click on OK. And here it is. Now, as opposed to the golden cross, criteria where there is no further settings, a golden cross either has occurred or has not occurred. When you're looking at something like the value of an indicator, the filtering system will uh, allow you to enter a range. So I don't care about the lowest value, but I do care the maximum value is 30. So uh, by doing this, it'll find all the shares where the, uh, RS uh, where the RSI is between zero, which is the lowest possible value for an RSI, and a maximum of 30. Whenever you make changes to a filter, you add a criteria, you change one of the values here, uh, a green apply button uh, will appear because the SharePad does not calculate the results in real time. So you just hit apply and the filter will now recalculate. And so now in fact, the FTSE All Share, we now have 39 matches. So there are 39 shares left in the FTSE All Share. And here we can see what the latest value of the RSI is. And you'll see that for every share, it's below 30. We hit add criteria again. 
Now this time we're looking for a MACD cross. So we select MACD and our values will keep the default values because that's what we set up on the chart. Of course, you can use whatever values you wish. And out of the sub options for MACD, I have crossed main and signal. So I select that main, so the main MACD line and its signal line and uh, above, meaning the main has crossed above the signal. If you want to look for a, uh, a bearish sign, then you can select below. It will find for the main line crossing below the signal. But we want above, I want daily and we want crosses that have just occurred. So we'll only look back one period. Again, just like with a golden cross, it's, it's looking for, for crosses that have occurred in the last period. I click on OK. Again, this is just a binary result. It's either crossed or it hasn't. So we'll either put a tick if it's crossed or nothing if it hasn't. I hit Apply. And now my uh, list of shares has now dropped down to uh, just three. I then add the third criteria, which is I want the MACD to be below zero. So here we do something similar to the RSI. Here we just want to look for the value itself. So we've got our MACD, we've got our settings, 13.26.9. We're looking for the value of the MACD and we're looking for the latest value. So I click on OK. And so here again, I want it to be below zero. So I set my maximum value to zero and I hit apply. And here we have it. We have two shares in the FTSE All Share that match all of the criteria. And now, in fact, if we go and look at the chart, we can see that Dignity is trading below 30 on its RSI, and its MACD has just barely crossed above its signal uh, while being below zero. So this is. Uh, considered a, uh, a potential uh, reversal. Uh, these, these tend to be quite high risk uh, kind of um, high risk type, types of techn technical filtering. But uh, if, they, uh, if they pay off, they often uh, pay off well. And we can look at the next share. And in fact, you can see it is in a very similar situation. It's been dropping fast, but the drop has now slowed. So it might be a uh, uh, it, uh, it might be a good time to, to get in. And in fact, it's just barely, barely crossed, but it has crossed. Uh, and again, the RSI is now trading at below 30. Of course, you can apply this filter to any list you want. All you do, other lists, US 500, if you're into American shares, and here we have it. So again, below 30 and just crossed below 30 just about uh, and just crossed so the idea when you're building filter you think of what you're looking for uh, on a chart and then search for that thing among the uh, the possible filter so I'm looking for the RSI to be like this so I'm looking for MACD to be like that I want I want the uh, average true range to be between these two values and and so on you put in uh, the criteria and the program will search for all the shares where all the criteria match I'm going to show you uh, one last filter very quickly and then I'm going to take a few questions then from uh, the floor. Um, I'm going to exit this filter and go back to a chart. I'll open up FTSE All Share again. We'll stick on Free Eye Group. So let's disable these indicators and let's add some moving averages. Another 
popular way of uh, checking uh, the uh, trend of uh, of a share is to look at multiple moving averages at once and to check where they are positioned in relation to one another. So you choose a wave of moving averages uh, and check to make sure that they are in the correct order. So I'm going to add four moving averages. I'm just going to use simple moving averages this time. Uh, so I will use a simple 21 day moving average. That's a month. I'm going to create a simple 63 day moving average and that's three months. I am going to create a 126 day moving average and that's six months. And then I'm going to create a 252 day uh, moving average and that's going to be my year. Of course, these are all trading days, that's why. And if I click on OK, here are my four moving averages. Now, when you start adding lots of moving averages on a chart, what uh, you might forget which one is which. Uh, there is help for that. Go to add, hit legend, and it will give you the names of all of the lines that you've drawn on the chart itself to make it easy. So uh, a, a good indication of a strong upwards trend will be for the 21 period simple moving average to be above the 63, for the 63 to be above the 26, and the, 20, uh, the 126, and the 126 to be above the 252. How do we do that? We go back to our list. We build a new filter. I'm going to call this strong trend and here again is our blank filter here what I want to do is uh, compare one the value of a moving average against the value of another to make sure that one is above the other one is larger than the other so one is above the other so I'm going to select moving average I am going to select a value and I will select simple and 21 what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use combine items below here. I'll show you if I press combine items. And uh, here you'll see there's a, a selection of options. Uh, you won't see it when I click on it um, because of a problem we discussed previously. But if you click on it, you can see you can do as greater than, smaller than, add, subtract, multiply, divide, etc. But what we want is to make sure that the 21 uh, period simple moving average is greater than the 63 period simple moving average. Click on OK and I hit apply and now I'm down to 133 shares, uh, 130 shares, sorry. I then hit add criteria and I now want to make sure that the, the 63 is above the 126, so I repeat the exact same process. So I select moving average, simple, 63, combine items, greater than, the 126. I click on OK, and OK again, and hit apply. And now I've got 40 matches. There are 40 shares where the 21 period moving average is above the 63 and where the 63 is above the 126. And now the last one is going to make sure that the 126 is above the 252. So again, moving average, 126, combine items, greater than 252. And here we have it. And if we now were to look at the chart, there we see, we now have free eye infrastructure 
and we can see that the 21 period is above the 63 which is above the 126 which is above the 252 and you can very easily build the opposite so you're looking for a strong negative trend by uh, applying the exact same criteria but instead of looking uh, for it's greater than you just look for is less than and that will give you the exact opposite of what we're currently looking for and if we hit the space bar and go down the list we can see that this is true for all of the shares in our uh, in our filter once again if we hit exit we return back to the full list um, so uh, yes, if you uh, do have uh, any questions, if there's uh, anything you wanted me to uh, explain into a little further details, I'll uh, I'll have another you know um, ten minutes or so of answering questions. So uh, yeah, type type away in the chat, and I'll try and answer. Okay, so. Uh... Can you detect a weekly hammer candle? Now, the program does uh, come with a candlestick pattern uh, recognizing uh, system. So I'll show it to you on the chart and I'll show it to you on the filter. So if you go to add uh, and select candlestick patterns, and you can choose what candlestick patterns you want to display on the chart. So for example, uh, a hammer. I click on OK and it will display any hammers on the chart. It's useful if you actually set the charts to candlesticks. Um, you can display multiple candlestick types. I've only selected hammer but uh, you can select them all if you want and each pattern will come with its own little symbol. Uh, click on it and it'll tell you exactly what it is. Now what you can do of course is search uh, for uh, any share where this particular pattern has occurred at some point in the last X number of days. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to create a new filter and I'm calling this hammer and I'll click on OK. I hit add criteria and in technical uh, you'll see uh, candle patterns is one of the ones you want. Um, so I want weekly so that's a chart you wanted uh, and again you can set it on daily, weekly or monthly. Uh, pattern type bullish and so I'm going to uncheck all other patterns uh, and there's a trend checking option here now this is uh, something to bear in mind so candlestick patterns tend to be used uh, as trend reversal signals so when you have uh, some bullish patterns tend to indicate the end of the downwards trend SharePad will check to see if the trend is indeed going downwards. The idea is that there's no point in searching for a hammer if the price is already going up. Um, so if you set it on standard, before highlighting a hammer, it will first check if the 20 day and 5 day trend line of that share is negative, is going downwards. That means that the hammer is probably a good indication that share price of a share might uh, be reversing so it will highlight that uh, relaxed will only check for the five period uh, trend line uh, none it won't do any trend checking it just looks for pattern so you might be in a very strong upwards trend and it'll still highlight the hammer so if you do this it will give us more results of course uh, but it might give us some results that aren't particularly useful from a trading point of view. So I select hammer, uh, trend checking none, click on OK. And what the program does, it goes back in time up to a year looking for these patterns and it will give you the number of days that have passed since the uh, last pattern occur. Now, of course, um, 
finding a hammer that occurred 100 periods ago, uh, 100 weeks ago is not particularly useful. Uh, so I am just going to set this to a maximum of three days. So it will find all the shares where a uh, hammer pattern has occurred at any point in the last three days. Here we have it. Now, if we look, uh, so in this case, sorry, last three weeks, because we're looking at weekly periods. Um, let's go to candlestick patterns, set the trend checking to none, and set our chart to weekly, uh, so bars to weekly, so we can actually search it. And here we are. So here's our weekly hammer, weekly hammer, weekly hammer, weekly hammer. Okay, so uh, we will end the webinar here and uh, we are still experimenting with these webinars a bit with their content and frequency, etc. So uh, if uh, you have some ideas of things that you'd like for us to discuss and show you, uh, if you'd like us to discuss and uh, delve deeper on the uh, news section or financials or portfolio management, uh, do let us know. Uh, our marketing manager is quite good. He will uh, uh, send. Yeah, he will, he will probably send you a, a little questionnaire. Feel free to fill that out because it, it, it will help us help you. Um, until uh, yes, in, it will let you know then the next time we run one of these, it'll probably be uh, in the not too distant future, sometime early January. Uh, we'll be doing a mail shoot when uh, when that happens. And uh, until then, uh, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.